Here's a classic related rates problem, the lighthouse beam problem. Suppose you have a lighthouse that's three on an island three kilometers offshore, and the beam rotates at four revolutions per minute. And the beam, uh, you know, sometimes it's out to sea, and sometimes the beam is pointing at the shoreline. And we're wondering how fast is the beam moving along the shoreline? If you were running along the beach, could you keep up with the beam, for example? Um, so step one is draw a picture and make it mathematical. We have a picture with some math to it already, but we could uh, change it a little bit. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, we could call this side Y. We could call this side X. Um, there's an angle thing going on here, so I'm going to call that angle theta. This is a right angle. Um, we could also call this a hypotenuse H. It turns out we won't end up needing the length of the beam here. Um, but as long as we're giving names to things, we could do that. Uh, step two, write what we know. So what do we know? X equals one kilometer. Um, and Y equals three kilometers. What else do we know? Um, could we figure out what angle would give us a one kilometer along the shoreline when the current, uh, so we, we know the beam is one kilometer along the shoreline from directly offshore. So we can figure out theta uh, without doing any related rate stuff. So we'll figure that out in a sec. Um, what else do we know? Uh, well, how fast is the lighthouse moving away from the shore? Probably not very fast at all. So I'd say dy dt equals zero. Um, do we know theta prime? Do we know how fast theta is changing? Well, we do know how fast the lighthouse thing is revolving. So we know d theta dt. Well, we know it's four revolutions per minute, but usually we would like to know that in terms of radians. So what can we do there? Um, so we could say four revolutions per minute times um, how many radians per revolution? Two pi radians per revolution. And so we get four times two pi radians per minute. See how the revolutions cancel the revolutions and we get radians per minute. All right, what else are we gonna do? Uh, how can we get theta? Um, got to think about our right angle trig. Um, we don't know h, we could figure it out, but we do know x and y, so that's making me think of a tangent. So remember tangent theta, so there's the toa part of SOHCAHTOA, is opposite over adjacent, and opposite theta here is x, and adjacent to theta is y, so right now that's one kilometer and three kilometers. And then how will we get theta itself? Well, we could take the arctan of all that stuff. Um, so the arctan of tan just gives us theta and arctan of one third. And if you actually type that in somewhere, you get um, 0 0.3217 radians if you like it in degrees, it's about 18 degrees. Okay, uh, what do we want? Well, we want to know how fast the beam spot is moving along the shore, which would be dx dt. Step four, write a formula or equation for the situation. Um, so we want something that relates x, uh, y, and theta. We actually just kind of wrote that, right? Um, tangent theta equals x over y. Step five, take the derivative. We need to know the, so this is uh, d dt tangent theta equals d dt x over y. Um, what's the derivative of tangent? That's something we often have to look up. It's secant squared theta 
But then because of the chain rule, we have to say times d theta dt. And then what's d dt of x over y? Well, that's a ratio or a quotient. We're going to have to use the quotient rule, right? Uh, but there's a good point here. Lighthouses aren't moving farther offshore. y is a constant, so I can think of this as 1 over y. So let me write that over here. Think of it as 1 over y times x, where 1 over y is a multiplicative constant. So then I can just write it 1 over y times d dt x. Um, here we'll say since y is constant, which we kind of set up here already. If I did the full quotient rule thing, it would all work out, but boy, would it take a lot longer. So then step six, solve for what we want. What do we want? dx dt. So how do I solve all this for dx dt? I've basically got dx dt there, and I just need to multiply both sides by y. So I get secant squared theta d theta dt times y plus dx dt. And then we have to think, how are we actually going to do that? Well, um, before we do that, let's check units. Uh, theta is unitless, um, and secant is also unitless. d theta dt, theta is in radians, and dt is in uh, seconds, and y is in kilometers. And uh, we want to get uh, kilometers per second. And we've got kilometers per second. We've got this unitless thing, so that doesn't mess anything up. Radians, what about those? Well, it turns out radians are unitless. They're the ratio of two lengths. And so this all, here, we'll, we'll put it in parentheses. Radians are unitless. So this all does boil down to kilometers per second. And uh, are we doing this per minute? Probably per minute. We could do it per second. OK, so the units all work out. Um, so then we're going to do secant squared of 0 0.3217 radians times Four times two pi radians per minute times three kilometers and you do all that and you get um, 83.77 kilometers per minute um, and is that fast or slow well uh, driving is usually a hundred kilometers like driving 60 miles an hour on the freeway is a hundred kilometers per hour this is kilometers per minute. If you do the conversion, that's like 3,000 miles per hour. So I don't think you could keep up with it. Uh, I mean, I couldn't. Maybe you could. Um, is there any way to check all this? That was a lot of crazy stuff going on. I'm thinking spreadsheet. How would you lay out a spreadsheet? So you'd have time, x, y, um, theta, um, d theta dt, and dx dt, and do 0, 0 0.1, x starts at 1, y starts at 3, theta starts at 0 0.3217, which you would actually compute using um, arctangent. Um, and then d theta dt, um, we said that was 4 times 2 pi. And then you'd update x, update y. Well, y stays the same. Um, you wouldn't need to update theta. Uh, you wouldn't need to update that. And then you could just do this by a forward difference quotient. And you would get the wrong answer. Hmm. Not because your spreadsheet setup is bad, but it turns out if the lighthouse is rotating at four revolutions per minute, going 0.1, so four revolutions per minute would be 0.25 minutes per revolution. If you go 0.1 
minutes into the future, that's almost half a revolution. The beam is now pointed out to C, basically, instead of along the shoreline. So this number is way too big. Um, if it's uh, 0.25 revolution, 10 minutes per revolution, you'd want to use something much less than 0.25, maybe 0 0.00025 to be, uh, you know, a fraction of a revolution. So as much as I like spreadsheets, um, you do have to be careful about using your time step, uh, getting your time step size right. Okay, and let's wrap up related rates by talking about the hummingbird question. Let's draw the world's best picture of a hummingbird observer here. Um, and it says the hummingbird is one, the hummingbird's flight path is one meter above the observer's head. And there's three different time points. One when the hummingbird is directly overhead. One when the hummingbird is a meter past or a meter before directly overhead. I can't remember which. And then another when the hummingbird is uh, 10 meters past directly overhead. So that's our wonderful uh, diagram. In terms of a math picture, you might want something, oh, pretend that's a right triangle. Um, how far away is the hummingbird? How far above your head is the flight path? You could label this the hypotenuse. I'm not sure it's used in the problem. And we're asking how fast is the person having to turn their head? And so I'm concerned with the angle of their head, so I would call that angle this, uh, theta right there. So that's the way I suggest setting that up.